Hello, Jason. I can hear you loud and clear. Good. It's lovely to speak to you. Yeah, you too. How's it down there? What's the weather like? You're not in even winter. It's spring yet, are you? Uh, not quite. No, we're in the throes of winter, but you won't believe that we're having a bit of a, a heat wave at the moment. So it's about 27 degrees. I think a lot like uh, <clears throat> England is enjoying at the moment. Uh, an Indi- well, not an Indian summer, but a summer of <laughs> of uh, unknown proportion. So what should I pack? Some 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 woolens, maybe? Or? No, no, no. I think you'll be good with uh, <clears throat> just uh, packing a fleece a fleece top. Um, but uh, no, September time is actually that is spring for you, when you arrive. Um, it's a it's a good time of the year. It certainly won't be uh, cold that you're familiar with. Um, it's It'll get a bit chilly in the evening, but the days are glorious, yeah. Lovely. Now, you, you sound a bit kind of distorted. Uh, uh, that's fine. I can make out what you're saying, but are you able to hear what I'm saying okay? No, perfectly. Is that a bit better? Sorry, I was a bit close. Is that a bit better? That's good. Okay. Fine. Just, just speak slow. Speak slow. <laughs> that I can do. There's a couple of things. And then we, we're... Um, now... I'm in the middle of moving house today, and I've got various people running around. So it's the worst case scenario. I get an emergency call saying, William, da da da, FaceTime, can you watch this going on? Could have to break off for like a minute. That's totally fine. In which case, what would happen is I'll deal with it. I'll see it come in, deal with it, and then bring you right back and keep, you know, keep it as brief as possible. Yes. Then I have to get, I wouldn't mind at one o'clock going up onto the roof of my building to see, because the Royal Air Force is having a 100th anniversary and they've got the biggest flyby ever band. Mm. Ever. This is like from Spitfires and biplanes and Lancaster bombers to yep. the latest F-35. So I can't not miss that. So no, we'll be done by then. No, we'll be done by then. Not there. Yeah, we'll be done. Yeah, no, don't worry. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna keep you for a full hour. hour I promise. Uh, we'll keep it tight and and tidy so that you can um, focus on that because I think it's going to be extraordinary. Well, they've got World Cup fever. I mean, <laughs> we go through on Wednesday. Um, I'm off to Moscow, so really, come on, you know, Croatia, Croatia, do us a favour and lose. <laughs> you know, um, it, it's a big, it's a big deal for the UK, for England. I mean, we, yes. don't, we, we don't get this far very often. No, well, that's the thing is that everyone's been a naysayer until you know last week. So you know now now everyone's a fan. So it's it's quite fun to <laughs> it's fun to to see how it's unfolding. You know, I mean, what, you know football, you know, or soccer. I've, I've been living in America, so mm. soccer is the word. And yeah. it's not a thing, is it? In South Africa, would it, you say it is a thing? It's a it's a very big thing, but we're just not particularly good. Um, but it's a uh, it's hugely popular. Um, certainly in in the in the black community, it's huge. I mean, you talking, um, you know, filling stadiums every single weekend, uh, fifty, sixty thousand people. No, it's a big deal, but we're just not particularly good. <laughs> okay, that can change. I mean, it just takes. I mean, I follow the Africa Cup of Nations because I, I listen to the World Circus, like, you know, and, and I don't know. Oh, would, would South Africa be in the Africa Cup of Nations? Presumably, you would. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We typically, um, it's like our cricket. You know, we 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 get we get pretty far in, and then we uh, we tend to choke. Um, but um, yeah, we're just we're just not that good, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when it comes to. That's what we say. <laughs> yeah, no, which is true because I think we, you know, we tend to treat it in the same ways. Everyone goes, "Oh no, you don't have a chance," and then all of a sudden you start winning. And then everyone starts paying attention. Listen, that's, that's them. That's my move, guys. I, there's some issues. I'm, I'm, look, um, bring me back in one minute, would you? I will. Sorry about this. No problem. All good. Cheers, then. Yeah. They're a special, really an existing friend of mine. They specialize in studio equipment, and they're really brilliant. But when it comes to this household stuff, you know that question, you know, that question, I wasn't born yesterday, but I sometimes think they actually were born yesterday. <laughs> I mean, this, this is why they say moving house is as traumatic as divorce, death. Um, yeah, it's right up there. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's... Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, carry on, let's go. You, you press on, you press on. I will press on regardless, yeah, I know, because um, time is fleeting, um, and... Uh, so you've you've seen the questions that I sent through, um, so we can stick. Yes, 
we, yeah, we, that. we can stick to those just uh, to keep it simple um, and say the point is really just to garner um, as much information as I can and then I'll split them I'll, I'll split what I create out into various releases and then I will share all of it with you before it gets circulated so that you're entirely comfortable with what goes out. I appreciate that. I wouldn't normally do that thing, you know. Um, it's, you know journalism to me is sacrosanct and that's not for me to do that. But this is slightly different in as much as we're, there's been a hiatus on my part, as I said in my email to Brandon, and then also it's an event, you know, we're, we're, it's a broader picture here. So um, that, 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 I appreciate that you're doing that. I like that. Um, you're, you know, you're, so let's go. Yeah, let's go. So the first you know, one is... To, mm-hmm. well, the first question, you know, I mean, I have to invert that and say, you know, well, yeah, but let's concentrate where I'm coming now. Yeah. I mean, you know, with, 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 with Africa generally, we look east and we look west, and the music business wants it that way. Mm. We, Britain and, of course, American culture and European, American culture, we look for contemporary music. That's where we look. We don't look south, and yet we're so immersed in the black diaspora, uh, sorry, the African diaspora. Mm. Um, and yet it's like we tend to not actually look at Africa itself because there's a, almost a conspiracy on the part of the marketers to, mm. to subset everything from outside of this axis of America and England as world music. Yeah. Which instantly just switches off everybody's interest. And it's ridiculous because um, it's, you know, it's, the world of music is informed everything. Uh, and however, that that's slightly why my attention hasn't been on South Africa musically. As a place, I mean, the amount of times I've got so many friends from, from South Africa that tell me how beautiful it is, and, and I only have to ask, what's it like? And the look on their face, you know, the light and the glow, how much they love their country and really want people to see it in its beauty and its, and its diversity. Why haven't I gone based on just my friends urging me. Mm. Question. Let's just say, with warm welcome, the warm welcome of, 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 of Martin Myers, here I come. Um, but I should have been able to go. go. I, I love the South African accent I always have. <laughs> I listen to the BBC World Service like an addict, so I know what's going on um, in the region. Mm. Um, culturally, you know, with YouTube, I, I love I love African music. I love the, particularly the vocals from the whole continent, ranging from Mali on the up, up on the western side to Tanzania, especially, and down south to the bottom where you are, mm-hmm. the bottom, you know, I mean, the southern tip. Yes. And the vocals of the whole continent just lift me up, and the guitar as well, and it's something that gives me a lightness of being. Mm. Why haven't I gone and immersed myself? And it's a good question. That's the, by the way, I've never been to Jamaica. And that's insane for me. <laughs> Yet. So, and then I've been to Rio. So I've been travelled wide. I love to travel. I mean, my favourite thing is to just go, point myself somewhere and go. And yet, the places where the music that makes, lifts my heart the most, where it comes from, mm. I've not been to, including your part of the world. So I hope that's an answer that doesn't seem patronise or insult, but um, I'm going to make that. Well, good. <laughs> We're very happy about that, which then leads us into... The next question is that what what are your expectations? Hello. Are you there? Hello. I can hear you. Uh, first floor. I can I can hear you. Yeah, keep on going, guys. Oh no worries, no worries. Oh right, okay, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so say just leading on into the next question, which is, uh, do you have any expectation? Um, you know, of 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 the South African. I mean, as I say, you you familiarised yourself with what's happening on the continent. But do you have any expectation on when you're here of what? I, I, I do expect a, a, a rough edge of electronic music. I mean, I mean, I followed the Antwerp since the, the get go when they first appeared. Oh, what? Okay, yeah. um, and I've been aware of the, the hardcore mm. nature of culture, and I really, really want to be immersed in that. I want to be immersed in everything. I mean, one thing's for sure I'm going to keep keep away from citing any artist that I might get asked about prior to my trip, because I want to be immersed there, and, 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 mm. and don't be able to answer the question. But I do expect to, to be in a musical culture that's 
um, free, if you like, yeah. the, the hegemony. You know, I want to see that where I see it, something that is particularly local. They're like, I didn't expect that. I didn't, so I want to, I'm expecting the unexpected, and as much as I didn't see that, how the hell did I not see that? And let's address some of the stuff that, issues that Mex would like to do, in other words, let's put that on the map, and if I can yeah. do it and help as a you know, non-native like So I expect to be, um, you know, to open out of my expectations a bit. Mm -hmm. I do want to see the guitar playing, and I want to hear the vocals, and I want to see the dancing. Mm -hmm. We do. <laughs> we do. Give us a beat. I'm expecting, a, I'm expecting a bit of a feast. No pressure, South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but... Thanks for that. Yeah. yeah what's going on here? What's that, what's that, what's that for? Yeah, yeah. what you might get that's the thing so <laughs> but um <clears throat> moving on to what you've uh, from f with regards to your production work um you know the question around you know how do you or ha how have you chosen the projects and the artists that you've you've worked with over the years you know have you gotten t to choose them um or did they choose you I don't really initiate it. I'm not a Jimmy Ivy who just gets on the phone 
Yeah. And snaps your fingers and everybody's in the studio. I wish I could do that. And I don't have a manager, so. Yeah, yeah. The answer to the question is, I kind of like I'm a little bit reactive um, on the choice. Yeah. And but but fortunately, um, you know that's worked. That's worked very much to your advantage over the years. Yeah. I think it has. Yeah. Mm. And you need you need them to get you. And you know, if you we now put, your question is about producing and putting yourself at the service of um, an artist. And the point, the, the key point is, it's their vision, mm. and they they will be the deciders. And musicians are very very. very um, Autonomous people. We're not. They're not actors who basically get summoned and, and turn up and get on the marks and get things. Positions might seem awfully um, sort of sexist, but they're not. They mm. really are very much self-determining. And don't forget, it doesn't take much to make an album. You don't have to get years of financing together. Mm. So that, on that basis, artists are very much um, you know more than you think. You, it's, I'm side stepping a bit, but your typical mm. artist knows, in my opinion, I'm a record producer and that's what I do, and I know a lot about record production. Now, I also know that artists who you may think never have a hand in anything to do with producing their actual music, yeah. it's maybe they're a singer, you know, they may wear, you know, sort of sexy outfits and say, believe me, chances are, if they're successful, they know a lot about what, what makes their records Tick. work right. Mm. Mm. Athletes, maybe didn't run, but they're often very smart, strategic thinkers who know loads of theory. And musicians, even if they you know dance around in spangled, um, shimmying outfits, mm. know exactly how it works, and they're the ones that are deciding it. And you have to you have to do that because because it's their vision. Yeah. Um, so so it's not so odd as it first seems. Um, so. You know, you, you, producers like me don't tend to just go, who shall I work with today? I don't know. I've doing something with, I don't know, Katie Perry, I'll ring her up. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, and I could ring up Katie Perry. <laughs> but we probably wouldn't end up going into the studio the next <laughs> You'd be phoning the wrong people. Yes. <laughs> Shouldn't be. <laughs> do you know what? I, mean, I, I, I do know her, a very friend, good friend with her security guy. Uh, I might ring him up and say, what's she up to? There we are. No. See, it can, it, it can work that way. So let's just say normally... One is, um, like, you know, it gets a call and yeah. it's expected, but one can always get an idea. Exactly, exactly. Nothing ventured, nothing no, gained. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so to the to the next point, as you say, your the artists that you've worked with and the musicians that you've worked with over the years, they know fundamentally what it is and influence obviously what lands up on the record. But when you listen back to the uh, the albums and the songs that you've worked on, can you can you identify your yourself in it? Can you see your personality within that song, or is it entirely sort of uh, uh, what's the word? I'm gonna, probably you're going to you're going to you're going to see Jason, but I'll give you a series of answers that are actually conflicting answers in the same answer. This is Scott Gerald, Gerald, who's an artist with somebody who can have two opposing points of view and. <laughs> Mm. Being impatient and patient, being yeah. in and doing out, being optimistic and pessimistic. These are the these are the taught things, you know, which we which we, we kind of art history lives. And yeah. To answer your question, um, it, it's indicative because mm. it's, it's not that you're supposed to go in and be. It's all about me. Yeah. Their records. I, I know. I I make solo records. I love doing it. And yeah. In fact, because I I think I'm preempting the next question, but. Because I love to make my own records, mm. there's no impediment to that. Yeah. I get to do it fully. And because I love to produce some people to put myself at, the, at their service, mm. to the point where I'm happy to just sit there and make sure the red light's on when they're <laughs> doing their best. And I'm happy to be a complete working, jobbing producer. Yeah. I'm not supposed to go in there and make it my record. However, it will come about that there is that thing that happens when you're essence is identifiable across the record. Yeah. Um, it can't help but be so. And, uh, and and then there are certain records that, that in a sort of really like, I mean, Ray of Light, obviously. Mm. You know, I mean, I feel very like much that that was both of our personalities and those, you know, that kind of the dream, the dream state of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and because I learned so much from the drum, I mean, I 
I don't really have to listen, I'll be honest. Mm. The common way of listening is unique. And so, and to, to, um, to drop it as well. Mm. Even though she spoke kind of hardcore commercial in her thinking, mm. she got the artistry like very few people do, actually. So, naturally, I feel um, part of me as a network and then, you know, talk song. I mean, there's, a, there's an album we did called mm. Toward the Emerald Region. It's not anywhere. You can't even get it on. ITunes. Yeah. Some reason I have to take this up with Warner is the right line exactly isn't that our record available, but that feels like when I work with Nori and Rico you now just mm. feel like very much mm. um reflects my personality. Well mm. I don't have a personality, it's all in the music, you know, you outsource it to your art and then mm. other people decide really. Mm, 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 mm. I keep finding archives though, Jason, I keep finding I've been on an archive call recently and I'm finding Material on um, old motor tracks that have been um, transferred to digital, and I do sometimes think that earlier versions of things do reveal the personality more than when they've been polished. Yeah, I wonder sometimes if I should just make a kind of retroactive release of things. Sounds sounds like a fun idea. Question, yeah. <laughs> you you kind of did answer it, so <laughs> I'm I'm good with that, and um, <clears throat> so. Okay. I mean, you know, I could all sorts of art, and Katie Mellon, for instance, she visualises everything, which is fantastic, and she kind of really got me started on this whole art thing that I've been doing, although she doesn't realise it, mm-hmm. and her personal knowledge, and so, you know, I listen to her record, and I didn't even write a note on that, I just produced it, but I do feel there's me in there, and I don't think she would doubt that. Mm. It's, you know, it's her, it's about her, it's a record, it's all about her, and yet, um, if she'd made it with a different producer, it wouldn't. I think there's a good sense of my own personality in there. I don't know. It's not wrong gender when I'm in there, I have to be honest. Mm. Mm. Well, I, I think, as I say, if you, um, you don't impose. If anything, your job is to is to add, um, you know, well, complement and uh, not necessarily supplement um, what they're creating. And I think that's the sign of a of a great producer that doesn't impose themselves on the artist. They just uh, their job is to make what they're hearing the best that it possibly can be. Yeah, you want them to be surprised but and not fearful and not mistrust. Some mm. new aspect of their own creativity that just pops forth in the moment. Yeah. by the fusion. Uh, one thing though, Jason, I did make a very strict, uh, qualification here. It's very important. <coughs> there's, there's two kinds of production. One is where you are basically sitting uh, behind the mixing desk or even on the sofa, seeing to it, they're bearing witness to the recording, but mm. not actually directly manifest in any way. I'll give you an example, Blur, mm. you too. Um, it's mellow. I didn't play an instrument on any of those albums at all, mm. but he came in and did, played everything. I didn't write anything, play anything. I was a, a textbook record producer. Mm. And then there's the other kind of thing where you're basically goes all the way to where you're playing everything. Mm. On Ray of Light, I played 90% of the album. And, and I mean, I played massive guitar. No, I don't think anybody realizes that I'm actually a guitarist. But mm. I would sometimes construct a track from scratch so that it, all the instrumentation is, is, is made by me. And of course, that would obviously carry a lot more sort of flavor of what I can do there because I'm playing everything and guitars and things. They're very emotive instruments. Mm. So they're both called productions, um, and yet um, they're very different. Um, in the, in, in, and that that could be a clue as to how people perceive it. Mm. I don't know if people are that interested. You know, who people, who, no, I think they are. It doesn't th- make a big deal. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, but if you think about it, there. I mean, I'm not. No, I'm just saying that there's um, there there are artists that you, and you've mentioned a few of them that. Um, you know, you two is a classic example where they've brought particular people with them along their journey. Um, you know, for extended periods of time because they bring they bring something to to the to the end product. That um, it's not to say that they couldn't necessarily get there on their own, but it's just adding another layer and personality to to what they've created. And when that's a positive thing, then then the music is even more extraordinary, one hopes. Yes, and it's great. All those three artists I mentioned all have this kind of 
covenant which they they it, it, it expressed. I mean, it, it, I mean, when I met Bono for the first time, he sat me down and said, "This is how we operate, William." And he said, "We write and play, you produce," and, and that to me was golden because it meant it, I didn't see that as precluding me from playing or writing when you want to. It, I, I saw that as a fantastic thing for that man to say. You get to be the producer proper. In other words. You get to be director, and, and, mm. and to have there's a kind of clear sense of roles, and have a teamwork, and a, and a, and a uh, visible, you know, um, line, of, line yeah. of command, if you like, and they like that. So you're producing, put rather than sort of passive aggressive, you know, suggesting, and somebody else is coming back with another suggestion, and mm. it becomes a bit of a battle. You are producing. We're here. It's akin to the directorial role. You get to direct properly. You know, you, know, you get to be the director um, uh, 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 and inhabit that role fully. Yeah. Um, while we uh, while we get on with being the band, you know, yeah. doing the meet and take role, and that's yeah. really satisfying to be given that role and have it so clearly defined. I like that. Mm. When mm. you're doing the more immersive way of working, we can get a bit more. Um, as to where yeah, yeah, I yeah, know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's generally consensus. Yeah. Which leads us to the next I've got point. This to make. Let me do a quick audio experiment with you. I'm going to do something, Jason. I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to say, I'm going to count down to zero. Okay. I'm going to go three, two, one, go. And I want you to say go at exactly the same time as me. Are you I'm ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. 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 Did you say it at the same time as me? Exactly the same time. That may have been a bit confusing. <laughs> right, here we go again. Three, two, one, go. Go. Did you say go at the same time as me? Uh, about a, a split second after. That was good. Now, here's a shocker. Now you're going to do it in reverse. You're going to count down and I'm going to say go simultaneously to you and then tell me what you think. Okay. You start. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Go. Wow, that's at least two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, right. That's there and back at 12,000 miles. <laughs> I, I said go at the same time as you in my ear. Yeah. Look what you heard back. That's the delay that's messing with the natural cadence <laughs> of our conversation. <laughs> and, then, and then there is the remix, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the next question is because, like you were saying, you are a musician, obviously a celebrated musician as well, which can be tricky when you're in a situation where you're wearing your producer hat and you have all of this musical talent and ability not to impose that, obviously, on the artists that you're working with. But the the question was you know, where are you happiest? And I get a sense that you are happy when you are creating original music equally as much as when you are producing it. Yes, I am. Because of what I said, you know, I'm having the, the opportunity to fully, fully take myself into both areas. Yeah. Therefore, there's nothing left over. There's no frustrated artist on it. I mean, I know I've met enough of them, you know, an engineer who's frustrated, he really wants to be a creative producer, engineer, artist, and tries to sneak it in. Mm. I, I don't need to. I, mm. I won't. There's nothing that I need to bring, and if I'm asked, um, so I can make an entire record myself, um, all the way to there, and I can sit there and just see the recording. And that's really good. I, I love it. I, I have to say that I do love it when I'm watching a bunch of people just so excited. They're just hurling themselves at the tape, mm. or whatever we call it now, hurling themselves at the, the hard drive. And it's just my job to make sure that the red light's off because something's happening and I don't want anything else to happen, especially with vocals. You're just hearing this next to being in heaven when, when, when singers break through a certain barrier in their creativity and there's something happening. And to sit and watch that happen. Mm. And then the other, I'm really, and so that's really, really satisfying. So I'm happy then. I'm also really happy when you've got a track. Doesn't matter how it came about. You know what? You've got a piece of music. It exists now, and you know it's good. Mm. Don't come on trees. You might have done ten. Mm. You do one, and you just think, 
why do I want to open the studio door and play it a bit louder than necessary so everybody in the building can hear it? Mm. Even if could deep down, I know this one's good. And we all kind of know it. Mm. You know, mm. get the summary. We know it's good. So the best thing is when you say, right, let's talk about making it just that much better. And it's just such a glorious thing. It's like, and ride home to the finish line. And that's, I'm happiest doing that. Mm. I'm happy being around guitars, being played well. I am a guitarist, but when I'm around proper guitarists who really can make a guitar work, I mean, you know, the, the ones that have got the special gift in their fingers, mm. that's a happy moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, but I think really that the best thing is that moment of super conductivity. Yeah. When the ideas can't even be contained, then that's just a glorious thing. Yeah. And you captured it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, <clears throat> moving on to the oh, deep... Yeah, you know, then, mm -hmm. No, I'm just saying, then, um, which sort of leads us on to DJing of late, as I said in, in my questions. Um, there's, as much as I've asked the one question, it's um, what, what inspired the, um, the journey into, into DJing, I suppose? Um, because was that... Oh, that... that's easy. Pirate, Pirate Radio in London in the late 80s. Um, and beginning of the 90s, and about 90, there was a move against regulation with the BBC. I mean, I love the BBC, but there wasn't really room for the new sound of house music, if you like. Mm. So there were a lot of pirate stations, and this was people on the rooftops of council blocks with illicit um, broadcasting, um, low frequency, with the home office chasing them, <laughs> making vinyls. It up. And of course, being around vinyl um, in such an instant way. I mean, we've always had vinyl, but now we're making it. Mm. And you know, I've got it in my hands. So I was looking at these guys come around my studio deck, and I just wanted part of it. So I obviously got a pair of decks and got. got. And the first time I saw this DJ, he picked up a vinyl, wiped it on his trousers, he just wiped it off, cut <laughs> it down, and just played it with his fingers all over it. And he's making this smashed up sound, and I just thought, I want to, be, to do that. And yeah. he, and got, you know, one, arm, one of my right arm is still longer than my left because of carrying my heavy So <laughs> <laughs> these days, if you ask me, what, what would I really, what would the, the American expression brothers, you know, what would you rather be doing? If you said, William, you can play anything you like, it's a clear answer, I'd be playing hardcore tech house, but you can dance to it, but I'd, it's hard and fierce, and you can maybe I'd play a two hour Odyssey at that. Yeah. But, not everybody wants to hear that. I can't get people dancing to yeah. someone else who, who claims to hate it. So we'll, you know, we'll see about that. <laughs> um, but, right, that's my favourite. But, you know, I, I, was, I love playing in things like Kazakhstan. And I love people come up and say, William, you know, I know what you do. By the way, this house music is a music I cannot make myself. Mm -hmm. I can't, even if I try, make the kind of really, you know what I'm talking about. I do. A certain type of tech house that is just so, so simple. Yeah. Clicky and over and over, relentlessly repetitive, but just gorgeously so. I will play that for hours, you yeah. know, and I, and I curate it. But nevertheless, you, you know, I could be in Kazakhstan and somebody comes up and they've paid me a lot of money. And mm -hmm. they'll say, Do you mind awfully, but can you play any pop? And I'll be like, Whatever you want. I like to make people happy. I'll play the top 10 if you like. <laughs> you know what? I just want to see a bunch of people dancing. I want them to kick up a powerful first because then I'll get invited back because they'll be buying drinks. Indeed. So it's the moment, Jason. It's the moment. And, and that's what's going to be the key to everything I do. It's the moment. It's what people want. Yeah. You know, it's, you just have to keep your eyes open and watch there be three or four people moving. Mm. And you just go, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm watching them. They've been slow with their movements. And I have to say, I also do like it when people Shazam it and can't work it out. <laughs> but I do like that. But if you think about it, it's no different to what you do as a producer because you're doing the same thing. You're listening, you're watching, and you are feeding into that. It was funny. It was funny at Buckingham Palace, though, with the uh, National Anthem because I've had the, 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 the CD. It actually gave me a CD by his footman. Yeah. And so the Queen had a party. I've seen it on Wikipedia. But it, it was like, like it's very so special because first of all, she's in the house and, you know, Her Majesty's in the house. Yeah. Full of Hampton Flags. Flags up. Yeah. But, and um, the key thing was, I have to make sure that at a given time, because everybody's 
She's gone to bed. She's gone upstairs at nine o'clock to go to bed and left all the staff to party. And believe me, they party hard. They work hard. <laughs> yeah. The, the, her staff, and it's a huge staff, and they party hard. But there is going to come a point when I have to wrap it up. And mm. the point will be when I'm given a signal to play them the anthem. And I have to, my, my main concern is like, I've got to get all the bass off it, all the beats, all the echoes, <laughs> put it back to its right speed, make sure it's playing that any crazy EQ in fuzz boxes. I need to play this one as it comes. And <laughs> that was a surreal moment of having to, you know, it would be just, just not right to have any treatments on, on, on the anthem. On the you know, it only well, well, certainly not in Buckingham Palace, no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now back it's to. It's common to get handed a phone by. You get handed a phone by somebody, and they say you've got to play this. And it's like if nine people handed a phone asking for the same track, well then you better play it. Even if their <laughs> mum comes on the line with voicemail, you know, you can't, <laughs> you can't ignore what people want. And no. some DJs will do that. You know, they just say we're, we're here to educate you, and I, I, I don't subscribe to that. No. I, I think it's more a matter of uh, actually, I want to be educated by the audience. Hmm. Hmm. Which then takes us to Mex and uh, your participation there. And I'm not, I'm not looking for you to give us or uh, give anything away with regards to what you intend to talk about. But um, have you been able to give any thought? It will be, it will be, well, it will be like making a track. You go where, and it will be like directing a set. I'm not coming in with a load of notes. Yeah. It will be very, very on the moment. Yeah. Um, On the fly. Let's see what we the people here want. What, what do we want to get at? You know, and how can I help? For instance, I can definitely put some info bites across. I mean, what I might examine is um, I'll take typical questions that I get typically asked. Mm. Look at why that they should actually be, um, how they actually reveal a trap in thinking. I mean, typically, it's quite pretty, it's quite quotidian, but William, what we have you use, and I'll be, and I'll be like, right, let's look at that question. forward to and then <clears throat> you've sort of touched on this earlier but um your career path as you know as we were talking about earlier um how much of it i mean if i mean i from what you've said i'm i'm reading more um more serendipity but also hard work but clearly 
your longevity speaks to raw talent. Um, well, look, let's, mm-hmm. let's get at this because, first of all, I, and this isn't any kind of like, oh, a new shit kind of false modesty. I don't have very much um, particular musical talent in any of the boxes, and which, you know, that's why I love to be around people that absolutely abundantly do. Mm-hmm. You know, my idea of guitarist is Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see the idea that somebody could just have liquid music pour out without thinking, and I'd love to be around. I mean, I'll never be that person, mm-hmm. ever. But what I do have is a bloody-minded way about <laughs> not ignoring all the lines and boxes, seeing patterns, mm-hmm. and accepting I'll get funny looks from people not seeing it. In other words, take a chance, you know, risk having a certainty mm-hmm. that Let's put it this way, a kind of curated serendipity. How about that? Okay, no, I like that. You, you, yeah, I mean, that's really what it is. You know, you, you, you are throwing a dice out there, mm. in, but, but you will see patterns. Mm. And the key is, I and mean, we all see patterns, that's the human way, mm. but you have a, an ability to make very, very quick decisions, both small and large, mm. and to trust in your own, I, I could trust in your own instincts. Mm. This particular sort of advice is the one to go with. I think that's it. Mm. And then the capacity for absolutely going at it and and letting you know, uh, you know, like an athlete would say, you know, mm. a little track and field athlete would say, that you, I, I'm not an athlete, but I hear parallels when they talk about the pain. You know, their lungs mm. are bursting, they're still going to get out of it. They went back for another another run. Mm. Right? They thought it through. And they kind of don't give up. But mm. I mean, you put the extra bit in, even if it's only an extra inch, mm. just to get that edge and, and, and see that thing through. So it is doggedness. It is, it is a doggedness. And have you ever got it wrong? Ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't tend to make compilation albums that I have people with, but absolutely. I mean, the amount of tracks I go back to that I did, yeah. unreleased tracks. That I just think, well, I'd love it as a prime bar. It's a now, right? And then, but you tend, I mean, look, batting averages, you do talk about the ones you get out and be back out of the park, and mm. it's about the ones that get noticed, and the ones that don't make it out, you know, you tend to fall by the wayside. You do get it wrong. What you really need to do is to accept that um, no matter how much you invest in something, if it's wrong, it's wrong, and you can't unwrong it, you know, mm. Mm. move along. <laughs> Um, I think this is this question which I think is number eight and this is the thing that said. this is something I think I'm going to I can't answer very easily now because I think I'm going to work it into your speech yeah into the keynote speech yeah definitely yeah I think that's yeah I give I, I will, so I've got to be a bit more measured in the keynote I think that's just going to hinge on you can say it around that no, no, good, good, no. I, I gift you that. Yeah. <laughs> and then <clears throat> once, you've, once you're done with Mex and you're back on the plane heading back to London, um, what's, uh, what does the rest of your, your calendar year look like? Is it jam-packed with, uh, with work or are you, are you being more selective? My favourite diary is an empty one. <laughs> I don't have an open on a manager. My favourite diary has got nothing in the top. It just be what's like a kind of musical flaneur, you know. Yeah. But I have this passionate thing I've been working on, and it really is to describe it as a bit of series of records called Strange Cargoes. And yeah. They're solo records I've been doing. They're yeah. not particularly renowned, but I love doing them. And yeah. I've got this basically a quintuple one. It's the whole world. I'm putting the whole world into it. It's, it's like everything, and it's been 20 years in the making, really. Yeah. And I, I think I might just sort of put it out there. It's not much incentive to make records. Nowadays, yeah. Um, uh, I shouldn't say that. That's too jaded But it's mm. hard to see a way to actually make a release if you're like me. That's what I'm not sort of. I don't have a stage act to say. So yeah, been sitting on myself. I thought, oh, maybe I will. But the other thing is, just I really want to score a movie. Okay, you should speak to Trevor. I've done a movie before. I did one. <laughs> I did a festival short for some friends, and it was so much fun. I thought, oh, I think I might just. I'm going to learn how to do Instagram. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> but what is like, but, 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 but what, what's on the card to me? Lots of travel, mm. and also being part of a team. I love being part of a team. I mm. like being in charge of a team. I like being subordinate in a team. I like giving orders. I like taking orders. I love a good 
happy team, another mm. team. Mm. 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 Same, I'll have a common cause. I love it when there's a bunch. Yeah, to be honest, just to go moving stuff around, just quite complicated what I'm doing. I've a team of people. I just love it. You know, just mm. everybody's in it together. Macking in, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the best things in life is to be part of a group of people who are all on the same, on a mission. Yeah. I love it. Mm. Mm. Last question, then I'll let you get to the. What's on the cards, post Yes. My art, obviously, as the art, an art career burgeoning, writing a book, travelling the world a bit more, and not not leaving it so long to go to places like South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, checking, working out, learning how to do Instagram, getting a radio show, um, and doing a film score. Okay. Like All by Christmas. <laughs> 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 Um, last question, but you've sort of answered it perhaps because um, what, what if anything is your magnus, well, your opus magnus rather? And it sounds to me that obviously... It is that, it is that album. It is that album, yeah? The film is that, it is that album because I'm, I've been doing art and loving it and even, you know, I've been selling it, which hmm. is nice, you didn't expect that. But what I really, really love, and I paint with oils, I paint on canvas with oils. See? Yeah. And just put it in there and say so basically I'll put everything in hmm. and 